How's it going everyone? Welcome to another video. I am Jeremy Alexander and in this video we are going to be making our own weapon select system. This is kind of a continuation to my dynamic projectile series uh, which was a beginner version of this series and I'm hoping to take it to the next level. So really this isn't as much about the weapon select as it is learning arrays. Now you've probably used arrays uh, in other game engines before, but when for some reason in Construct 2, it kind of gets lost in translation. I know it did for me, and I'm hoping that this video will help clear that up a little bit. I'm hoping to make this easier for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to store all of our weapons into an array. Now if you look at my object gun here, if I can double click and open it up, I have four animations. I have my revolver, my shotgun, my machine gun, and my double shotgun, and all of these are weapons I'd like to swap between. I would really like to be able to use all of them, uh, and in order to do that, I need to store it in something like an array because it can store data better than anything else. So what I need to do, firstly, is actually add the array. So it's an object, and I can just double click, and right here under data and storage, I'm gonna add this array to our project. Now, I'm kind of assuming that you've never used arrays before, but in case you have, maybe it's still just a little bit confusing on how Construct 2 displays it versus another language. Uh, it's generally a lot easier to see arrays typed out than it is uh, visually like this for some reason. So what we're gonna do is just kind of hopefully make it a little bit easier. Now we've added our array to our project here. I'm gonna actually rename this. I'm gonna call this ARR underscore weapons. So array weapons here. And I'm gonna select array weapons and I'm gonna actually look at the properties here. Now these three properties are pretty much all you need and they're very important. Uh, the width, the height, and the depth. We're not gonna really talk about the height and the depth as much. I might show you something with the height uh, just to kind of make it a little easier for you. But really what we wanna focus on is the width. The width is our X axis of this array. And this is pretty much the most important part where we're gonna store the beginning of all of our information. So right now it's set to 10, but we only have four weapons here. So we can actually put this down to four. So let's click again on that. And let's change the width of this array to four. And let's hit save and let's hit debug. And now in the debugger, I can actually pop this out here and you can see this array just like you can see any other object and you can live debug this object. So let's click on array weapons and you can see here that, let me actually make this a little bit wider so you can see this. You can see our array width is four, yet it's only showing three things because just like any other language or program, our array index starts at zero. So zero is really one. So zero, one, two, and three, so our four elements in our array. Uh, and this is how we're gonna target this. What does the zero index equal? What is the value of the zero index of array weapons? That's what we wanna do and we wanna start with that. So let's close out of this. And what we also wanna do in this video is we wanna be able to just kinda tie it in. So to tie it in this way, I've added in a HUD text element here, and it's just kind of a basic way to show you that we can actually display what weapon is being selected. So let's go to our event sheet here. And now hopefully you know how to do a lot of this other stuff from my previous videos. If not, I'm sure you can go find a video on how I've done it before in the past. Uh, if not, I'll probably be going over that in one of my mega course lectures or some other lecture down the line. What we wanna do here is we wanna add everything to the start of our layout. So let's add the event system. Let's type in start and click on start of layout and let's put that to the top. On the start of the layout, we wanna populate the array. We don't wanna do it anywhere else, although there is more you know, manipulation that you can do with the array, but that's not for this. We just wanna actually populate the array. To make this even easier, I'm gonna make this a blank sub event. So I'm gonna hit B. And now usually you would want, you know, some kind of event to trigger this action here, but really just for organizational purposes, just so you can actually see this array being populated one at a time, I'm going to break this up into different blank sub events. So because it's blank, it's only going to be triggered on start of layout. It really doesn't mean anything else. I'm going to add the action to our array weapons here. Now we have a bunch of options here. You can see we actually have our manipulation stuff there, which we don't need to mess around with here. But what we do want to do is we want to set the value of these positions. So we have set at X, set at XY, set at XYZ, set the size of the array. Really, we're only concerned with setting at X. So let's set at X and we want to we want to set the first index. So I told you before that it was based off of zero. It actually says it right there, just like every other array system out there for the most part. 
Uh, now we want this value to be our weapon and we want this to be like so. We want it to be a string called revolver and hit okay. So now we need it to be in all caps because that's actually gonna match our animation. So let's copy and paste this. And let's actually, you know what, before I do this, before I get ahead here, let me hit save and let me hit debug and let me show you this just so I can kind of take this one at a time. So in the debug here, if I click on array weapons again, you can now see that we're setting the zero, the value of zero to be revolver. So we're just gonna do the same for one, two, and three. So to do this, I'm gonna copy this and paste and let's paste this twice more. And I'm gonna change this to be one and I want one to be our machine gun just like that. And I want two to be our shotgun, just like this. And then I want three to be our double shotgun. There we go. And hit okay. So let's debug and let's make sure that this populates again. Now, I don't want to get into doing the more advanced stuff right now. I just want to get this point across. and I want to be able to make these weapons swap out. So uh, I'm going to just kind of show you what I mean by adding in more parameters to the array with the height in a second here But really now you can see our array all of our width all of our elements of this array have been populated zero equals revolver one equals machine gun two equals shotgun three equals double shotgun now the capitalization not sure honestly if the capitalization is that important because you could kind of switch the case sensitivity around but for right now I'm matching it to be exactly the same spelling and uh, case sensitive uh, to our gun animation. So hopefully all this makes sense. I'm going to show you this real fast and I'm gonna reverse it just so I don't lose you here. We're gonna change the height of the array to be two. Let's hit save and let's hit debug. And when I pop this out now, you can actually see that every single width, every single object here, now has a comma zero. So now we're just adding to this array that we're adding to this Y position. And this is where arrays kind of get confusing, especially when looking at it like this. Uh, you know, you can actually look at it like this. Maybe that helps you out a little bit more. But when you're looking at it like this, it's kind of hard to understand what is going where. So this zero, what we're going to do in another video is we're gonna actually have that store our bullets. We're actually gonna tell it the revolver can hold you know, 200 bullets, the machine gun can hold 1,000 bullets, the shotgun can hold 12, the double shotgun can hold 22. You know, So we're just gonna kind of work on that and that's how you can kind of extend arrays to be even more powerful for you. For right now though, you're just gonna go back to doing our weapon swapping. I just kind of wanted to point that out just so you kind of knew what was going on where, and I know that that might be really beginner if you have done arrays before, but I'm telling you for a lot of people, this can be really confusing. So what we're gonna do is we're actually now going to, we need to manipulate this data. We have the value zero to set to revolver, we have value one set to machine gun, but we need a way to actually increment this value so we can actually swap between this. So let's hit V on the keyboard. Let's make a global variable. Now I believe this can also be an instance variable, but for right now we're just gonna make this global. I'm gonna call this weapon underscore num and hit okay. And we want it to equal zero because that's where we start off. We start off at with a value of zero. And what we need to do is we actually need to add this to our every tick and we need to tie this to our gun animations and to our HUD element. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're gonna actually use the array to our advantage. We're gonna go into our, let's think, we wanna go into our gun animation first. Let's go object gun. In the every tick, set the gun animation to be, like I said before, ID underscore, which is what I prefixed all the animations with and uh, we want to actually now use the array. So instead of typing it out, I'm just going to show you here in the objects with expressions panel, our array weapons expressions. So we have a lot of different things that we can use with this array. We have a lot of ways to call and uh, retrieve information. Uh, all we need to do for this though, is we can just get the value from the array with the at uh, function here. So we're just going to double click on this. And now, yeah, you can get you know more information from the other parameters, but we just need the X uh, value. So what we wanna do here, now you can actually put this at zero and hit okay. And that's only gonna put it at the revolver. We need an actual way to increment and swap between all of these. So what we wanna do here is we wanna actually use that variable that we created. So we wanna set the animation to be ID underscore, just like we have our object guns. And 
whatever weapon num equals. Now you might be thinking that weapon num is an integer, it's, it's zero, but actually it's correlating to the value of the array, which is revolver, which is why this works. So what we're gonna do here is just to actually have our HUD working as well, we're gonna do the exact same thing for our text. We're gonna set the text to be, again, array weapons, double click on at, and we're just gonna have it be weapon num and hit okay. So what I can do here just to kind of show you this more live is I can debug this and I can pop this out again. And now you can see that uh, weapon num equals zero, therefore revolver equals, therefore it's displaying the revolver and our gun is actually at the revolver. Now we don't have a way to swap this yet, but I believe if I set weapon num to one here, you can actually see it swap because now our array or our weapon num equals one or our index, our array weapons dot at is now equal to one and that therefore equals machine gun. So if I go back here, I can even change this again to two, which is really, and I can go all the way to three, but there is no four. And that's kind of something that we need to double check when we're incrementing it, because we're obviously not gonna have somebody play a game and just kind of enter in the number of the weapon they want. We wanna be able to swap. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to very simply add a keyboard. Uh, we wanna do on key pressed and I'm gonna use key space, key, keyboard space pressed. And what I wanna do here is I wanna actually, you know, control the weapon num. I wanna increment the weapon num, but I also wanna compare uh, how many elements are in the weapons array. So to do this, I'm gonna hit B to make a sub event and I'm going to double click system compare the variable. Now I want to find out if weapon num is greater than or equal to the total amount of elements in the array. And to do this, I'm going to have to go to array weapons dot with, because that's, that's how many uh, elements we have in our array. We only have these four uh, X position elements. So now you would think that this is enough, but because we're starting at zero, we actually need to subtract one because there are four elements, but it's only displaying zero, one, two, and three. So when we subtract one out of this, it's now actually going to loop back when we set it to zero. That might be really confusing now, but I'll explain it again in a second. Now you think we might be done with this, but we actually need to invert this because this is where we're gonna increment this by one. So if we actually hit I on the keyboard here, let me zoom in here just so you can really see. Uh, if we hit I here, now it's saying when space is pressed, if weapon num is not greater than or equal to four minus one, so three, then you can add. So if it's not the max amount of numbers or not the max amount the array holds, then you can keep going. Uh, we need to make an if statement or we need to make an else statement just like this if I hit X on the keyboard and we're gonna need to be able to reset it. So hopefully this will make sense in a second here. All we're gonna do is we're gonna add one. So system add to weapon num add one. Uh, and then likewise, if it's not true, if weapon num is greater than or equal to uh, four, then what we wanna do is we wanna set it back to zero. So we never have uh we never have an invalid number there. So let's just set it to zero. Uh, and hopefully I can explain this to you again, but let's just, hit, let's just see this work first. Let's debug and let's hit this. And now if we look at weapon num here and I hit space, you can see it going up and up and up and everything's working. And when I get to four here, it's gonna go back to zero. It's gonna set itself back to zero because it's checking to see if it's four minus one, if it's three. Let's go through this again, just because I know that this, this could be a little bit complicated here. If weapon num, which is equal to zero, is not greater than or equal to four minus one, so three. If it's not equal to three, then add one. If not, then set it back to zero. Uh, I really hope that that makes sense to you because really all we're doing is we're looping through. So just as another example, because I don't feel like that may have been explained the best way I could have gotten it across, I'm gonna add in another weapon here. So let's copy and paste. Now I don't have an animation for this, so it's okay. I can just make this up as I go along. Let's call this um, our minigun. And let's bump up our width here because right now we only have four elements here. Uh, but now we have five weapons. So let's put this to five. And because we're zero based, this is gonna equal four. So that's why we need to subtract one. 
technically you could have this be you know five you could put this to five and that'll technically work but when you get to the next level when you want to go back to revolver you can't do that because it's just going to go to zero it's not going to actually loop around properly at least so let's debug this i feel like i'm starting to get uh you guys confused so i don't want to do that i want to keep this as simple as possible here let's look at our array weapons you can see that i added in another one because we we're at five we have total five elements uh but we go zero one two three and four and our fourth is our minigun here so let me hit spacebar spacebar and there we go we have our minigun it doesn't have an animation attached to it but now we're going to go back so really what is happening again is we're checking to see how big this what what this number is we're checking to see what the width is and we want to see if weapon num is greater than or equal to it and if it is zero which it is then we're going to be adding one now when it gets to the actual number which is four because that's how many uh that's how many we have or that's the actual value it's not how many we have we have five but the actual number is four this would have been a lot easier if I just set zero to be nothing and then continued from one so you could kind of let be less confused but anyway uh, once we have that we can then successfully add one to weapon num now if it goes if it's greater than then it's just gonna set it back to zero and that lets us loop through I really do hope that that made a lot of sense to you because if not at the very least I hope that you kind of understood at the beginning how we're setting up these arrays and how we are able to uh, control the x-axis like this uh, I know it's a little bit confusing but if you kind of just copy this code and go through it yourself I think you can start to see where it's gonna break and where it would work uh, and one more bonus is because we have done this to the animations we can actually make you know animations for these weapons uh, this weapon could this shotgun could potentially have you know 10 more frames of animation here that do other things and we can still control it from this animation we don't have to make a separate one for that so I'm gonna be working on making a more dynamic projectile system a more advanced proje uh, dynamic projectile system with this I really do hope that this has helped you out in the be beginning the basics of arrays we're gonna be adding bullets like I said before uh, we're going to be doing a lot more stuff with this project, so I really do hope that this helped you out. If not, just leave me a comment and I'll be sure to answer you. Uh, I really do hope that this kind of made sense in a more fun way for you, but really just mess around with it. Try to break this. Try to actually break this and see and debug. If arrays are confusing, kind of debug this and put this to a static number and see what happens with it, and you'll see just why this works the way it works. Uh, I really do hope that this has helped you. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Jeremy Alexander, and I'll see you next time.